For Dan's a software product company, and we use biometrics, which are human factors that are uniquely you, your face, your voice, your fingerprint, your eyes, to establish trust. And people have their fingerprints with them all the time. They have their voice with them, their face, and they don't have to remember anything. Nine out of ten consumers prefer it, and it's proven to be very successful in combating fraud. Steve, what does Experian do with, with the, this type of software, this type of unique usage? So biometrics data helps Experian better detect fraud and also provide a really good consumer experience for all of our clients. And for us, we need to help provide the very best fraud detection we possibly can for all of our clients and provide that seamless customer experience so it's really easy for all consumers. How long do you think it'll be before passwords are a thing of the past? They're going to be around a while. Uh, they're very easy, they're very cheap and inexpensive to use. But the problem is they're very frustrating for consumers. Yes. The number of passwords you have to remember, all the rules about whether you can use special characters or not use special characters. So there's better ways to provide security and protection and make it a lot easier for How consumers. How many people here at this table have a list of their passwords for everything because you can't remember them all? <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I've got lists of like probably hundreds of them that are everywhere. Um, you said cheaper. How long before what you do gets to the point where it can be readily used on just about everything? Uh, very soon, we're having it uh, deployed on a global basis with financial companies, banks, payment, wealth, insurance. It's going to be adopted in other industries. Uh, the market force is really our customers love it. And it starts often as a way to combat fraud. But then what happens is companies find that if they make it easier for consumers to do business with them, their customer satisfaction scores go up. Other industries, you have a third of shopping carts that are filled online, abandoned because at checkout people forget their passwords. So we're seeing companies start with a fraud as a purpose, but then they see all these other benefits. So they're driving the adoption. You know, I still get frustrated sometimes. My iPhone, I love my iPhone, but it doesn't always recognize my thumbprint. What's wrong with that? Why, why doesn't it work? Sure, it's interesting. And what our philosophy would be that a customer should be able to choose any biometric type, your voice, your face, your fingerprint, to accomplish any transaction. Sometimes if your fingers are damp, a fingerprint sensor won't work. So environmental considerations come into play with biometrics. And that's why it's important to provide that choice for a consumer to use an alternative factor. How, how quickly can you fool, or how easily can you fool anything, like a voice recognition? Would somebody else be able to imitate my voice? Joe does some pretty good impressions. Rich Little, Rich <laughs> Little can be yeah. whomever he wants. It's very, very difficult. What we've seen with millions of customers using every day near zero incident of fraud or account takeover. So while passwords can be easily spoofed and eight out of 10 data breaches are all traced back to passwords, the facts are in the market with biometrics. But that's because biometrics aren't used nearly as much. It, you remember people used to say nobody ever hacks an apple. That's because they had such a small percentage sure. of the marketplace at that point. Biometrics, I'm guessing, are a really small portion of the marketplace. Hackers go over after this stuff. If you try actively to get into it, how, how easy or difficult is it's it? It's very difficult. So there are millions of people using it today around the world. If you think of what would it take to try and impersonate somebody who, uh, somebody's biometric, you'd first have to steal their device because we create a double lock with the device. Then once you have the device, you'd have to defeat the locking mechanism on the device, fingerprint sensor or a pen. Then once you're into that and you launch the application, you would then be challenged to authenticate yourself with another factor of biometrics. So you'd have to defeat that and the anti-spooking. So you'd need their fingerprint and their voice or their eye or something? Sure, any combination of those is really the business rules that the companies wanna set. Uh, and all of those are much more convenient than trying to type in small, small characters and passwords on an iPhone screen. Steve, how, again, how long do you think before we're using this for just about everything we do, like ATMs, how long before it gets to that point? So we see that the marketplace is using a variety of different technologies to provide that security, but also the consumer experience. We wish there was a silver bullet that could solve fraud everywhere. There just isn't. And so facial recognition, biometrics in combination with one-time passwords, in combination with email addresses, we think that layered approach works really well for our clients where they can pick and choose technologies that are best fit for that business. Which sector will benefit the most from this? Which, uh, is it banking, is it the ATMs, is it technology like the cell phone, something like that? Certainly everything digital benefits from this because the same way that you want to be recognized when you walk into your coffee store, you want to be recognized online. Very simple, very easy to use. So that's mobile banking, that's applying for credit cards, that's getting a new cell phone, that's even signing up for new utilities. Any way that you're interacting digitally with your phone, you need this level of authentication. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC.
Thanks for watching.